do you um, have a bitch really? I do have a bitch really. Let's hear it. Um, so this bitch really is actually from the shallows. <laughs> so our character is, is stranded on a rock too far from land. She can't swim there by herself, especially with a leg that's been bitten into. The blood everywhere, it's just going to attract it, yada, yada, yada. She realizes that she has a um, phone in her bag, and she notices a human being on the beach. And I think this is towards the evening. She yeah. kind of passed or out. early, early morning. Yeah, she kind of passed out, woke up, noticed that there's somebody on the beach. So the camera goes to the actual person on the beach. The person, um, we're told, is drunk as shit or has a hangover because the first thing you see is this big bo- bottle of alcohol. And um, he gets up. I don't think he speaks English, but she's trying to, you know, contact him and and say, hey, I'm over here. Help me. So he notices her and she's gesturing that I have a bag and has a phone. Call the police. Call somebody to come help me. So he's looking around. He's stumbling and he doesn't know where he is, what's going on. But he does notice that she's pointing at something. So he goes over and he grabs her bag and you think okay he's too drunk to really do anything but he's going through her stuff and then he starts stealing shit yeah he starts taking her stuff and looking through it and took her phone and put it in his pocket and i think he tried to open it and it didn't work i don't know what was going on but then he puts the backpack on and starts walking this is her only sign of help. Anybody who's anybody who's been around this whole time. And time's running out for her, so she's devastated. But this asshole just decides to steal her stuff and doesn't help her out. Then he notices her surfboard yeah. in the water. Now, I understand if you want to loot somebody's stuff and you see some valuable things in there. I don't know what you want to do with a surfboard, but he felt compelled to get it and it was close enough to shore for him to get into the water and grab it but i'm thinking in my mind what do you need a surfboard for right so he goes into the water he grabs a surfboard and i think they tried to play on this fact that he was drunk or whatever he you know he wasn't drunk enough to like steal a bag but he was drunk enough to get on a surfboard but she's trying to warn him it's a shark get out of the water so he's on this surfboard and he's all like imitating trying to like swim or whatever and then obviously the fucker gets eaten yeah. and bit and you know the surfboard cracks in half and his body is like torn in half and he's like climbing on the beach with half his body gone and then he eventually just dies. Bitch, really? Did you need a surfboard? First of all, how much money do you really think surfboards are going for in Mexico? I don't know. To think that you were going to benefit from stealing this thing. Plus, you were drunk as shit. Don't get in the water. You can't even barely stand on your own two feet. I mean, he was stumbling. Yeah. But for some reason felt he needed this surfboard. Talk about greedy. Bitch, really. Like, I don't wish death upon somebody, but damn it, you got what you deserved. Bitch, really? And yeah, I, I've been getting some great feedback on this. Um, so, yeah, so, I'm glad that we're doing this. And yeah, I, this is you. You got one this time. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it real simple, okay? <laughs> um, scream 2, the beginning, the first kill, Omar Epps. Bitch, really? You, I mean, not even like Omar Epps. I mean, bitch, really, you wrote that? I mean, who the fuck puts their ear up to a stall? Who cares what they're saying? You don't know who they are. This is so embarrassing. Yeah, so he puts his head up to the stall because someone's mumbling in the other stall and he thinks it's funny. Again, perpetuating the stereotype that black men don't take anything seriously and they're always like the class clown. (laughs) Gotta laugh at everything. (sighs) And I mean, really, it was just setting up so that they could follow it up with the amazing kill of Jada Pinkett because that's horrible. Um, You know, they just had to get him out of the way so that he could put his coat on. Yeah. It was just a quick, easy way to get him out of the way. Like, really, bitch. Really. I mean... It could not have gone so well for Ghostface to kill him in this matter. I mean, did he really think he was going to go into this theater and kill him exactly the way? How did he know he was going to go in that stuff? I mean, how did he know he he was going to listen? And he, for some reason, he just lives up to the stereotype because he did exactly what he was supposed to do. I guess, you know, 
Secretly, I, Omar, sorry. really, the killers is, and scream too. Was Jada not enough for you? you like <laughs> you had to sit here and get off on whoever was next door. First of all, he was in the men's room, so right. it's like if anything, you were listening to two dudes anyway. But yet, it was still hot enough for you to be nosy. Go back to your woman, and you would have still been alive. Seriously, and. I mean, just to point out really quick, because we are talking about Get Out and the representation of black characters in horror films, um, it's really disturbing. After he's killed, the other two guys that are at the stalls just bounce. <laughs> I mean, they don't notice that he's killed. Yeah. Or do they? And they just don't give a fuck. Are they white? I, they're wearing masks. They're yeah, they're all they wearing masks. white mask on. Yeah. And no, it's white. <laughs> and then Jada is killed in front of 300 people, and they don't do anything. It's a representation of what's happening now. Yeah. Yeah. It's always happened. Black I, I still demon. think it's just payback for Demon Knight. They were just like, this woman, <laughs> how said, dare yeah. you live in a horror movie? You die well, in a day. She was blonde in that one, so she got a pass. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. No, that, that was a good one. And for the... Sub, or for the theme of the episode, I actually picked a moment from a little movie called Stay Alive. Have any of you ever heard of this one? No. Yes. <laughs> this is the video game movie with Milo and all those other bitches. Yes, yes. So in the big craze of the teen slasher movies, they actually made a video game. Um, or, I'm sorry, they made a horror movie based on an online horror video game where... If you die in the game, you die in real life. And it was the spirit of Elizabeth Bathory who uh, basically tortured kids in her mansion or whatever because she would use their youthful blood to stay young. She liked and, to bathe in virgin blood. Exactly. Women. And so um, the movie starts out with you know one of the players playing the game and he dies by being hung from a chandelier. And then it turned out that um, the same spirit of the game kind of came out and recreated that exact same scenario, and he died the same way. So this bitch really comes from a uh, Sophia Bush. Ha! Yeah, she was in there. She played a little gothic girl, um, one of the only female. Well, there was two gamers in there, but one of them was just there because she liked some, you know, Ginger D. And um, was in there just for that. But Sophia Bush played um, a girl named October. Ah. Yeah, right? And um, Sorry. she had a relative in the, in the movie, and her brother died earlier in the film. So she's outraged. She's pissed off. She's at this point where she's just like, whoever did this, I'm just going to kill them. She knows more about the history of this spirit more than anybody else, so you would think she would be the smartest person in the group. Uh, <laughs> no. So her brother has died. She's pissed off. They're now figuring out exactly what they need to do to, you know, take them out. Oh, and one key aspect, the game keeps playing. So yes. they're not playing the game anymore, but once you've signed in and started, it just keeps playing. So whatever is happening to the characters in the game... You don't necessarily know as the movie audience, but you know, that's why the characters keep getting fucked up and they don't yeah. they don't know it. They don't know what to expect. Yeah, usually they wouldn't they wouldn't get killed until they died in the game. But then yeah, like like Nate said, the game just kept going without them. So they started seeing all the game elements in their real lives just being played out. And so they're they're heading off to get their final plan on you know, going and figure out what they need to do. Meanwhile, October who is a smoker, apparently just needed a smoke. She not only is smoking outside while the rest of them are figuring out what to do, she decides to smoke in front of this house that's under construction. Uh, it's just abandoned. I don't know what's going on. She turns around and she sees one of the spirits in the window. For some reason, she believes that she can go in and take them down herself. She has no idea what she's up against on how to destroy it. She even tells her friends how to get rid of the head, like Elizabeth Bathory. But for some reason, she feels she can take this demon on. So she enters in the house. She grabs a nail gun and decides she wants to shoot this holographic spirit in the face. What? By herself. 
bitch, really? Did you honestly think that this was going to work? And then when she it didn't, oh, she tried to run. But what happened? She gets her foot caught in some shit that's laying on the ground, catches her foot. And then the ghost grabs her, hangs her upside down. And her last words is just go fuck yourself. And then her neck gets slashed. This is where it gets even more disturbing and pathetic. This bitch decides to smoke in front of a home that's abandoned. Nobody can see her or whatever. When her friends get wind of the fact that she's not only alone, but that the game is still playing on its own, so they race to go out and find her. You'd think that all they had to do was walk out of the house and she'd be next door. This heifer went down the street to go smoke by herself. It, if you see this scene played out, these friends had to run at least two blocks down to get to her. And they obviously got there too late. What possessed you to walk that far down the street to go smoke on your own? You got ghosts running around. What the hell were you thinking? So... She got what she deserved, I guess, but that bitch, really. Was, bitch, really. <laughs> but yeah, you should see this movie. Actually, it's actually I would for, love to see it's it. a good laugh. It's got really, what's it this week? Oh, okay, so um, I'll reference our well, I'll reference the movie I chose for our intersex representation, which that's probably really insensitive. I'm sorry, I'm being so rude. But, um, I mean, some people, I don't know if you know what intersex is, but, you know, someone presents as a certain sex. Internally, they're born with both sex organs. So, um, if you've seen the movie Splice, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's kind of like she had this man inside of her all along. Um, but my bitch really is, and it's not like a death scene, but... Bitch, really? You basically had sex with your daughter. What was that? And then I, she's your son. I knew you were going to bring that up. I was like, please say Splice. Because oh God, if he does, I know exactly what he's going to say. Bitch, really? Bitch, really? You're gross. You're gross. I mean, were you that deprived? I mean, I guess he... I guess Sarah so. Sarah Pauly. I mean, she's... 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 She looks good, right? I mean, but she was about her work, I guess. So the only thing really, he could do was, I don't know, it was like, was she putting out some sort of pheromones for you to be attracted to her? I don't think she was. I don't think that was one of her things. So Adrian. you're just gross. I mean, for one, Mr. Brody, like you, your roles are usually very far fetched. Like you pick some of the strangest shit. But did you have to be the guy that fucks his own daughter? Like. <laughs> I mean, shit, it's like those wings popped out. It's like, okay, you've definitely made a bad choice already. Now you're just adding fuel to the fire. Stop. It was just so bad. Can I tell you, that theater was like... <laughs> you saw it half, in the theater. Yes, I saw it in the movies. It was like half laughing, half mortified. Like, like nobody I'm knew sure how everybody to was. react to this. Yeah. It, it, it was just something like... And it wasn't gratuitous. No. Like, I mean, if you think about it, there is a meaning to it. There, There's something, like, it, it's not to say it's a good meaning. Is but it there... wasn't for gratuitous, like, sake. There there had to have been some kind of, like... Uh, it, I don't know. But nobody knew how to react to it. It was just like, why is this happening? Is it like, secretly, fathers desire their daughters? Is that what that's supposed to be? Notice I did not bring up his nasty ass in our Father's Day episode. Who? <laughs> oh, him. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Shoot. You can stab me, but don't do that. Really? Don't do bitch. that. Yeah. Bitch. That was a nasty. Very good one. I, yeah. The first one that I want to bring up. <laughs> so, okay, so I got to set the scene here. So, picture it. Southport, 1997. Was it 97? It was 97. 97. You've got Sarah Michelle Gellar as Helen. It's 4th of July, summer. <laughs> God, <laughs> I can't even like, because it's making me mad even repeating this. Mm. This is towards the end of the movie. And if you don't know it by now, I'm talking about I Know What You Did Last Summer. Uh, she is one of four who is running from a killer, a, a guy with a hook, and she is holding her own. This woman is actually surviving through her whole attack scene. She's jumping out of windows. 
she is getting tackled, but for some reason still finds a way to get away. She's going up elevators, she's climbing out windows, and she's running down this alley. <laughs> She sees the parade where yeah. there are witnesses. People. There are people around. She can blend in and get herself lost in the crowd. She is ahead of this guy. You don't even see him. She's running down this alley, and then all of a sudden she stops. And she looks back to see if he's there. And this crowd, this parade is probably like 50 feet away from her. Not even there. And... All of a sudden, I don't know how, this killer just manifested himself inside of this like tower of tires <laughs> and grabs her and kills her in front of all these people. She could have made it. She could have lived. And she decided to stop and just turn her head because she what? She thought she heard something. I I'm not sure. It just baffles me that she died this way. Now I'm not blaming the character. I'm blaming the writing. Like, that was some really shitty writing. Yeah. To just get or, somebody to, like... Who knows? The director decided, let's do this. Or the producers came and said, let's do this. Who we, knows? We need to figure out a way to kill her. Because, obviously, she's she's too good. We're writing her to be really good. Now she has to do some stupid move to get herself killed. It was just lazy. It was very lazy. Yeah. Bitch. Bitch, really? Really, bitch. You, yeah. you had to turn. You had to turn around... <laughs> and figure out where he was in order to go into the crowd. Yeah. I don't appreciate that. Not appreciate I just can't do it. Well, I think that was a good pick. <laughs> I support you.